uh, you, you will never uh, a continuous function is a, like if you start drawing the graph of the function with a pen you will never have to lift your pen up anyway yeah. that's a continuous yeah. so connected set is something like that when you start drawing a line in uh, if you start let's say drawing lines within a connected a connected set it will never happen that in any line you will have to pick your pen up any line you will have to pick your pen up the paper and then jump over a point Oh, no, no, no. So you mean any line between joining two points lies inside the set? Not really. I mean, uh, what I mean is, uh, it's something like that. Like uh, we had the continuous. No, any line that is that is a different concept. That's a path so connectedness. The point is, yeah. That's path connectedness, right? That is path connectedness. Uh, say that again. No, that's not even path connected. That's not even stronger than path connected. What you are saying, you just take two points and the line joining these two lies in the set. Hmm. That's an important concept. Convexity. Right. It's called convex convex sets. Hmm. So this is a very important concept. So convex sets are of course path connected. You have path as a straight line. But uh, yeah, the imagination of connectedness actually should come from path connectedness. The point is you can draw a path between two points. There exists one path. Somewhere, somehow you can go. So it's it's kind of, if you want to, go, it's, let's say you you are inside Iser campus and you want to, you, you want to go to Kollani. You can't just uh, draw a line and go around that, right? So you have to, uh, so there is a path and you should, you, you would go through that. It's kind of similar. There exists one path. There might be more. But uh, I mean, you might not have actually lines all the time. But of course, those for every point, every two point, the lines are there. Then it is convex set. And these concepts, convex set, plays a very important role in mathematics, in every branch of mathematics. OK. All right. So, uh, so, so, so whenever you think of uh, connectedness, you generally think of uh, path connected. So that's what uh, it comes to our imagination. But then uh, it is not always true that connected set is path connected. But examples are kind of pathological. So let me give an example, which which actually more clearly will be described in the next semester topology course. Let me share the screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right. So today is, uh, think. Okay, so example, so this is the first one, example of a connected set. which is not path connected. So example is as follows. So you consider the following set. I'll draw in a moment. So X comma sine one over X. zero less than x less than equal to one and take the union with that zero comma y minus one less or equal to y less or equal to one so what is this set
So let me try to draw. So start from let's say one. Okay, so, so the thing is as follows. So you see sine of one over x. Well, when x is between zero and one, what is one over x? Where does the range of one over x? Greater than one. Right, so it goes from one to infinity, right? So, 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 and sign of that is definitely it varies from minus one to one, right? So, what happens is as follows. So, it would actually. will be fluctuating but this string can get into closer to closer closer and closer Yeah, it will go closer and closer, yeah, on this part. Not quite. Yeah, it will go closer and closer. Yeah, and then so do you see the set? It, it actually varies and it, it actually oscillates and oscillates faster and faster. Uh, and it actually at the end is minus one to one. The whole, all the points will be limit point of this graph. Okay, so this is a graph, see? This is a graph, and these things are actually limit points of the graph. All right. So this this is called this is called a topologist sign curve. So you see, I mean, if, if you want to connect from, let's say, one point here to one point in the line, you can't join it by, by path, right? Because this is going through infinitely many, right? And it is a limit point. So you cannot join through a path. Is this clear? So you take a point any point in the curve and in the, in the graph and, and a point in the imaginary axis, right? Zero comma Y. Y lies between minus one to one. And then if you want to connect the, through the path, you have to, you have to come from this and this there, and it's never ending, right? So you cannot have a path. 
path is a continuous function from a closed interval, what would be the image of closed interval? Yeah, anyway, that you will see in a moment. And you know, actually, uh, for a function from R to R. All right, so this is this is what it is. And more detail, I know why it is this, why it is not, why it is connected? Because you see this minus one to one, the whole thing should lie in one. So if there is a separation, then minus one to one, this imaginary axis, this one, this must lie in one of the open cells, right? Right? And the whole graph must lie in the other of the open set. That will contradict that these points are the limit points. Yeah, any question here? Okay, second thing is theorem, continuous image. of a compact subset a compact set is compact so this is true for even uh, metric spaces topological spaces it's much more general so let us see a proof. Suppose if x to y, two metric spaces, is continuous, right? So suppose this is continuous. And k compact and in x to show fk is compact in Y, right? Now suppose, so consider, consider an open cover V alpha alpha belongs to some index set of FK. Right now, this implies F inverse V alpha. This set alpha belongs to index set is an open cover of what? Open cover of of K. Right, and since K is compact. This this has this this cover has a finite subcover. So there exists alpha one, alpha two, alpha k, alpha m in the index set such that k is containing f inverse v alpha one union f inverse. V alpha k alpha m, right? So this means F k is containing V alpha one union V alpha m, right? Is this correct? Yeah.
what happened is it correct yes sir yeah you should respond this is basic right basic set theory yeah so this implies uh, this v alpha alpha belongs to the index set has a finite sub cover this implies fk is compact all right so here you see this image of if it if so so a curve or a path is always a compact set in rn right it's a image of a closed interval ab all right and here you see this uh, this curve this set is not a compact set right when you take the limit points only then you get compact sets and these are not part of the graph so that will give a contradiction uh, of joining this this two point by curve yeah third thing is theorem continuous image of a connected set is connected so this is what this is the generalization of your of of of, of the intermediate value theorem right do you see it the generalization of intermediate value theorem yeah intermediate value theorem is, was about say this if you look at any interval and look at point if a between if a and if b all the points there would be the image of something here right so image would be like well, some interval it may not be if a b if a b all the time but it's actually the minimum and the maximum and you see here as a corollary of this if you if you look at a from r to r or closed interval a b to r it has a maximum and it has a minimum so this may not be this may not be f of a f of b so this may be maybe just c comma d this is the minimum the minimum and this is the maximum then any point would be the image of it so and it is it is this theorem is a generalization of this one so when when this side there is no interval no real line for example rn you know what you would say is the image should must be let's look at a proof suppose f from x to y continuous x y matrix spaces and x is connected to so f of x is connected suppose not there exists a separation u comma v so this is open in fx open in fx such that fx equal to u union v right then you look at f inverse u 
Yeah, if it works you. Yeah, if it works you. So here, why? Since f is continuous, f inverse u, f inverse v are both open sets in x, right? And x equal to f inverse u union v, which is subset of f inverse u union f inverse of v it's actually equal right is this fine yes sir so this implies and and then separation and then this since since u intersection v is empty actually this of course disjoint open sets so this implies f inverse u intersection f inverse V is also is also empty, right? So this x equal to this implies x is, is not connected. This is a contradiction. Hence, fx is connected. Any question here? Okay, so next, uh, neighborhood of a set, of a set. So how do you define neighborhood of a set? I right, suppose K is a set, right? An epsilon neighborhood of K is defined as union would be X. Uh, well, here, yeah, this is fine. So instead of writing this one, let's write X is in K is sub K in, K in X x is in x such that the x comma a less than epsilon so the ball and a varies in k is this one so consider in in, in r2 An example. So suppose this is x-axis, this is y-axis, and you have a set like this. Okay. An epsilon neighbor would be you consider any point and look at a ball of radius epsilon. Yeah. 
you get a ball of radius epsilon at every point. So on. And in that way, you, you, you actually consider what you get is C is equal to between about this kind. Right? So this would be called epsilon neighborhood of of this, so this this distance is always epsilon. All right. So this sometimes it is useful. Uh, so now you define this function. So define a function. Define. Uh, function fx rn to r so 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 k is a subset of r let's look at now k is a subset of rn subset of rn so define fx is distance from x to k Right, so what is the distance from x to k, which is so minimum, uh, right, so minimum may not exist. So this is infimum of distance d of x comma y, where uh, this is y belongs to k. So infimum over y, right? So maybe I should write it in a better way. Y is in K. Right? You know these things. So now the question is uh, whether it is continuous. Right? So exercise. So that. F is continuous on all of Rn and F inverse 0 is equal to K. Right? Is it clear? So here, let me give a hint. Use trying and inability. So second part is clear, right? So this it is this infimum must be zero when x is in x is in k. Mm, is it true? Uh, so shouldn't it be closure of k? Yeah, you are right. You are right. In fact, I need to take k to be compact. So even in close, so yeah. So here, here assumption is right there. So k compact in Rn and f Rn to R continuous. In fact, closed, uh, for closed set, it would work. So it should be closer. You're right. You are right. So, but uh, this is somehow uh, a nice one. For example, if you so so next next you can define actually distance between two set right. So distance between let's say k one distance between two set.
Yeah, I think here it is should be good enough for closed. For compactness, we will do something else. Yeah, so distance from K and L is is infimum again. Uh, X belongs to K distance from X to L. Right, so this is the definition. So distance between two sets. And here you see uh, an example. If K is compact, so this is an exercise also. If K is compact and K intersection L, uh, K intersection L is empty, then distance from K and L is greater than zero. Okay. Now, if you look at the following example, so what about distance between two closed set? Why do we need compactness here, right? So if you consider the following, right? So this, this is y equal to 1 over x. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so uh, equal to one over x. So if you look at the graph of this one, and so k, if you look at, so this is the last thing. Look at k to be x comma zero, x is in R, and l to be x comma 1 over x, x is in R, uh, 0 to infinity. And distance, so what will be the distance between k and l? Uh, 0. Yeah, so k intersection l is empty. And still, this is zero. Okay, so the exercise is here that so that suppose uh, K is a compact subset of Rn. So this is a very important exercise. It will be used later on in in many of the analysis courses. So suppose K is a compact subset of Rn and U, B, U is an open set, an open set, set containing K, K, then there exists epsilon greater than zero such that K is contained in union, X belongs to K, B, X, Epsilon, continue U. So the eps, Epsilon neighborhood, so this is the Epsilon neighborhood. So whatever open set you choose, you will get an Epsilon neighborhood of K inside that open set. Okay, but you need K to be compact. So the question is to prove that, to, to show that, show that. And, and is 
compactness of k necessary okay so this to our uh, exercises all right so it is uh, time for which so let me first uh, stop recording